where local news comes first. TV3, KATC, Lafayette. And now, from the heart of Acadiana, Action 3 News at 10. An Acadiana town rocked by past controversy now looks to its new police chief for leadership. These parents are camping out hoping to enroll their kids in a Catholic school. And in medical news, safer ways to treat painful jaw problems. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bill Leger. And I'm Deborah Fuller. Thank you for joining us. The much embattled Generette Police Department now has a new leader. You may remember the previous police chief, Ted Kahn, resigned after coming under heavy pressure from some African Americans in the community. Kahn was involved in the shooting of a black robbery suspect. He claimed self-defense and was acquitted on all charges. The Generette City Council tonight appointed Jimmy Waters from Lafayette. Waters brings years of experience to the job. Waters says he's ready to begin to heal the city's wounds. <laughs> community pulling together for the same common goals is the best healer of wounds. Uh, you have to have dialogue, you have to have communication so that uh, the police department is in tune with what the community needs. The Generat City Council chose Waters from a field of four candidates tonight. Twelve candidates had originally applied for the job. Well, if generate citizens are happy with their new chief, they don't have to worry about a state group trying to have his terms in office limited. Former Governor Buddy Romer's group, Louisiana for Term Limits, is now saying that it'll not push for term limits for city officials. It will concentrate their efforts on term limits for state lawmakers and members of Congress. Executive Director William Hankins says if a city is happy with its officials and doesn't want term limits, his group will not get involved. Hankins made the statement in a speech to Louisiana police jurors. He was critical of Governor Edwards for opposing term limits. Voters in the city and parish of Lafayette have already said they want the two governments consolidated. The votes may have been cast, but actually getting the job done is another thing. Parish President Walter Como says the parish requested a little less than $2,000 from the city for legal fees stemming from a recent snag with the merger. The Department of Justice ruled the election districts need to be, with, need to be redrawn to reflect a stronger minority vote. The motion for money never got past introduction because there was no second. City Council member Pappy Landry says that's because some council members feel like their questions have not been answered. Now they're coming back with additional fees and for uh, legal fees and certainly they'll be probably coming back to us for more money for uh, calling an election and so forth. I think we need to, a briefing from the council, from both uh, the administrations to see when is this all going to be to end. And but the fact of the matter is that nothing, no bills have been paid as yet. Nothing's been turned in. This is just to provide dollars for the commission to be in a position to move forward. So I think it might just be a misunderstanding. Lafayette residents will vote on the changes to the election districts later this year. Your experiences during Hurricane Andrew are now being used to help the rest of the country. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is developing a nationwide disaster plan and is using Louisiana and Hurricane Andrew as a model. FEMA is drawing guidelines based on what happened to Louisiana during the hurricane. The plan will tell how areas receiving donations can properly manage them, and it will also set guidelines for those making the donations. Louisiana has long been noted as being one of the poorest states nationwide, but according to researchers, the number of people on food stamps in Louisiana is well above the national average. In July of last year, more than 700,000 Louisiana people received food stamps. That's 18% of Louisiana residents. Only 11% of the population nationwide received food stamps. The average annual income in Louisiana in 1992 was just over 15,000, while nationwide the income was at 20,000. Beginning today, if you buy a handgun, you won't get it for at least five days. The Brady Bill is now the Brady Law. The new gun control measure calls for a five-day waiting period. Local law enforcement agencies use those five days to check state police records for felony convictions. Convicted felons cannot buy guns. But some officials say there is a problem with the system. The Brady Law requires local law enforcement agencies to check with state police 
to see if a potential gun customer is a felon. But here's the problem. State police say they only know about one in every four felons. They say local law agencies often don't inform state police of all felony convictions. Some felons could slip through the cracks and still get the guns. Critics of the Brady Law say the new gun control measure will only inconvenience law-abiding citizens. It also puts a heavier burden on law enforcement. We're, we're set up. It cost us one, you know, a manpower to do that because uh, we have to, you know, set aside one person just to do this and then uh, run the computer checks and everything. Uh, so it's going to be a toll on uh, on our office to make sure everybody complies. Proponents of the Brady Law say it's the first step in stopping violent crime. They say with all the shootings in this country, something had to be done. The Louisiana Supreme Court has ordered a new trial on the claim that making oral or anal sex a felony discriminates against homosexuals. The lawyer representing John Baxley says this is a major victory for his client. Baxley was accused of offering an undercover policeman $20 for oral sex. Rather than charge him with solicitation, which is a misdemeanor, authorities charged him under the Crimes Against Nature Act, which makes sodomy a felony. The court also ruled that Baxley cannot challenge the part of the statute that outlaws homosexual relationships. A self-confessed serial killer from Louisiana has lost an attempt to move the sentencing phase of his trial to another location. Danny Rawlings' lawyers claimed because of media coverage, Rawlings could not get a fair trial. Mike Deason has more. This proceeding must be moved. Making this request is painful for me personally because I have to swallow my pride and admit that I was incorrect in my original opinion that this case could be fairly heard here. As Rowling watched with almost indifference, his attorney explained there are two reasons he feels jurors who have made it past the first round of interviews cannot be fair. First, the highly publicized nature of violent crimes involving the murder of college students. And their ability to disregard community sentiment in favor of Mr. Rowling's electrocution. But Prosecutor Rod Smith says it's not just Gainesville that's out for vengeance toward Rowling. Having committed five first-degree murders, three armed burglaries, and three sexual batteries with great force, no easy thing I submit to the court to set aside whether you are in Key West or Pensacola. And the prosecutor argued there is as good a chance to find an impartial jury from the 117 prospective jurors here in Gainesville as anywhere else. For those Again, reasons, Judge Stan Morris time, agreed. And from my own observations of the response of the 117 people who have returned, I deny the motion for change of venue. You probably heard about people camping out to buy concert tickets, but what about parents camping out to register their kids in school? Well, that's exactly what these parents are doing tonight. They say because of limited openings at Karen Crow Catholic in the pre-kindergarten and kindergarten classes, they'll camp out on the school grounds tonight to be the first to register their kids tomorrow. From my understanding of the past history, people do come early to get in line, and there's a limited number of slots and the good possibility there will be more children than slots. So, as part of the price to get a child in a Catholic education, we're willing to come and wait in line. Yeah, there's only 23 slots in, in pre-K, so uh, first come, first serve, so uh, that's why we're here in line first, and hopefully we'll get our kids in like that. Now, Mr. Bordon says he's been at the school since 6.45, and Mr. Claus has been there since 5 o'clock. And registration actually begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, and those parents who waited or are going to wait until tomorrow could get rained on. I know. Well, at least I think they have a cover for yeah, tonight, so they'll be okay. Tonight. But some other folks won't be so lucky. Let's check in with meteorologist Ron Krasuski. Well, you called it. It will be a wet morning across Acadiana, but luckily for the campers outside, it's going to be a warm night. Right now we're at 62 degrees and we're really not going to drop down all that much further. For tomorrow morning, the morning low temperature about 56. Southeast winds blowing at 10. The rain chance will be high. It's going to be cloudy. If you're not getting rain tomorrow morning, you will certainly get rain tomorrow afternoon. I'll tell you all about it coming up soon. All right. Thank you, Ron. Well, help for those with job problems is later in medical news. But coming up next, a rookie cop who raised her kids then joined the force is laid to rest. That story coming up. You're watching Action 3 News at 10 with Bill Leger, Deborah Pooler, meteorologist Ron Krasuski, and Mac McCullough with sports. This is where local news comes first.
The Palestine Liberation Organization says Israeli concessions aren't good enough. The PLO has rejected a package of proposals aimed at coaxing Arab parties back to peace talks in Washington. PLO officials say the concessions don't do enough to protect Palestinians in the occupied lands. Two Palestinians were killed Monday in clashes with soldiers in the occupied territory. The Arab death toll is now up to 64 since a Jewish gunman opened fire Friday. Two American F-16 fighter jets gunned down four Serb warplanes over Bosnia. President Clinton has defended the action. He says Serb pilots forced NATO to destroy their aircrafts when they refused to leave a UN no-fly zone. Clinton says every attempt was made to avoid the encounter. Officials say the action shows NATO's resolve to keep the Serbs, Croats, and Bosnian Muslims on track toward resolving the conflict. Three Algerian policemen who hijacked a Spanish airliner have surrendered. 120 passengers and seven crew members were on board the plane. None are hurt. The pistol-packing hijackers were seeking political asylum in Spain. They were denied. The hijacking lasted five hours. It comes one day after Algerian police say they killed the head of the armed Islamic group. That group is thought to be responsible for dozens of deaths of foreigners and police. An apparent case of sibling rivalry taken too far. An 11-year-old California girl is in critical condition. Her brother allegedly shot her yesterday. The 13-year-old boy got a hold of his father's gun and apparently shot his sister. The girl had arrived just a few hours earlier and had been brought to a family gathering at the home. The boy is being detained at Juvenile Hall. Michael Griffin's attorney says his client did not shoot and kill Florida abortion doctor David Gunn. Griffin is the anti-abortion activist on trial for the killing in Pensacola, Florida. A witness testified that another anti-abortion activist shot Dr. Gunn. But a jail guard testified he overheard Griffin admit the murder during a phone call to his wife. Gunn was shot three times in the back as he arrived for work at the abortion clinic nearly a year ago. Hundreds of law enforcement officers mourned slain rookie policewoman Christy Hamilton. A teenager gunned her down last week. The 45-year-old officer participated in police academy graduation ceremonies just five days before her death. Two other officers were killed earlier this month and were buried one week ago today. Lorena Bobbitt says she'll return to her job as manicurist, but she would like to go to Disney World first. Virginia judge ruled Bobbitt poses no threat to herself or others and set her free. She had been under psychiatric observation since the jury decided she was temporary, temporarily insane when she sexually mutilated her husband. The judge put conditions on her release. She must see a private therapist and she's not allowed to leave the state of Virginia without the court's permission. Meteorologist Ron Krasuski is coming up with our forecast a little later. But up next, thousands suffer from jaw pain. We'll show you a safer and more effective way to treat TMJ. Teflon jaw implants were supposed to cure painful TMJ problems. Instead of a cure, they turned out to be a curse for thousands of patients. Today, they're off the market, and dentists have much safer ways to treat TMJ trouble. Cindy Burns has a story. The bone has literally been destroyed. This patient is one of hundreds of men and women who received Teflon implants in the 1980s. Many of them felt better right away until the Teflon started breaking down and the patient's own bodies were reacting to that material as a foreign body and so as the body tried to destroy the foreign material it ended up destroying the bone of the joint itself today at age 24 her jaw joints are completely gone the pain is constant eating is often impossible she will probably never get better. I think uh, surgeons and other doctors were greatly misled because we were all led to believe that it was adequately tested. And it hasn't come out until recently that there were little or no uh, testing done. By 1987, Dr. James Gwynn had seen so many patients with disintegrating implants, he knew something was going horribly wrong. On January 6th, he wrote an open letter to every oral surgeon in Utah, warning them the Vitek Teflon implant could be bad news. Today, most dentists and surgeons agree with Gwen and are using much less invasive TMJ treatments. 
headaches, neck aches. Gayla Muir developed TMJ problems early last year. There was clicking in her right side. It hurt to eat, but surgery was never a consideration. Instead, under the advice of Gwen, she used meditation and physical therapy to relax her jaw. She learned not to clench her teeth at night and used biofeedback as a stress reducer. I would have to say that that was probably one of the best areas of therapy. Twelve months later, Gayla is pain-free. James Gwynn wishes everyone would begin TMJ therapy conservatively. Since so many TMJ problems are related to stress and jaw alignment, he focuses on stress management and uses a variety of dental appliances to realign the teeth and jaw and to prevent patients from clenching and grinding their teeth at night. If we do everything we can to reduce the stress on the joint or the loading of the joint, so that might mean uh, physical therapy to reduce muscle tension or to reduce swelling within the joint. In some patients, the jaw joint is too worn down and therapies won't help. Sometimes surgery using the patient's own cartilage and muscle tissue is the only treatment. But as a growing number of doctors and dentists will tell you, surgery should be the treatment of last resort. Still to come tonight, a look back at the week in sports. But up next, meteorologist Ron Krasuski has our extended forecast. The first here tonight's winning pick three numbers. Ron Krasuski's weather forecast has received the American Meteorological Society's broadcast seal of approval. A very nice day today, but it probably won't look so nice tomorrow. Unfortunately, we do have rain, and unfortunately, more unfortunate news, some of the rain, showers, and thunderstorms may reach severe limits. It looks like a nasty day tomorrow, but not the case today. Out in Crowley, we saw some blue skies, a few clouds, a nice breeze, but for the most part, a very nice day across Acadiana. But the clouds have moved in, rain is falling throughout some parts of Acadiana, and big thunderstorms are firing over the panhandle of Texas right now. Currently 62 degrees is our temperature. The dew point is close behind, so our relative humidity back up there, 87%. This little spread here of only 4 degrees means that we're not going to cool off a whole lot more for tonight. The pressure is holding steady, and the winds this past hour out of the east at 10 miles per hour, they're really coming out of the southeast or even south, pumping up that moisture. So February is coming to a close, and our February rain amounts across the viewing area. Normally, about four and a half inches of rain should fall. And if you look at St. Martinville, they had above normal precipitation this month, 4.77 there. Eunice, five and a half inches, even more rain down at Pecan Island. Six inches of rain down at Pecan Island. Jennings picked up 3.15 inches of rain this month. Rain, 3.95. Here at Channel 7, just over three and a half inches. 4.1 in Brobridge and Avery Island. Channel 3. Channel 3. What did I say? Channel 7. Channel 7. We're at Channel 3, you're right, Bill. What can we expect for March? Well, we can expect to see an average temperature of 71 degrees for the high, the average low 50, the records 93 and 22, the average precipitation for the month of March 4.16 inches, and the wettest mar March came in 1973 where we had 11.62 inches of rain. Afternoon high temperatures were very nice across the view viewing area. The coolest temperatures, well, nobody was really cool. Avery Island had 68, 76 here at Channel 3, 74 in St. Martinville, Grand Prairie 68, Ville Platte 71 degrees. Currently outside, it's warm, it's a little muggy too. 54 degrees is the cool spot in Monroe. Shreveport and Lake Charles, both reporting light rain showers. And as you can see, quite a bit of moisture rain showers from just west of ESF, Esler Field, to Lovekin, Texas, northward into Dallas, Fort Worth. And as you can see, mostly everything is just light rain with maybe an embedded thunderstorm or two. But you look back to the panhandle of Texas, and there are some big boomers firing up here. This is an association that, with the system that I'm expecting here tomorrow night. Look at these big thunderstorms and notice where they are in relation to this area of low pressure. They're to the north and to the east of the low. 
Well, keep an eye on that because by tomorrow, we're going to be to the north and to the east of this low pressure. So there's going to be some nasty thunderstorms for tomorrow afternoon. I'll be here to keep an eye on things just in case anything does pop really severe. For tonight, 56, the overnight low temperature. Southeast winds at 10, the rain chance 60%. For tomorrow, showers and thunderstorms once again. Some strong storms producing locally heavy rainfall amounts, maybe two or three inches in some locales. 66, the high south wind at 15 miles per hour, and they will be gusty for Wednesday, a morning shower or two, and then clearing off Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I don't know what got into me saying that, but I appreciate you correcting me. Well, you, there were some sevens maybe on the map. Maybe. I maybe didn't even work for Channel 7. <laughs> no, well, they got some nice people over there, but we are at Channel 3. Thank you, Rod. Right. Well, many local parishes will be receiving federal funds soon. President Clinton has declared North Louisiana a major disaster area because of the recent ice storm. 75% of the funds will pay for the storm damaged public facilities and electric power systems. Those parishes eligible for assistance are Bienville, Claiborne, Lincoln Union, and Webster parishes. Still more to come tonight, including a look at the winter sport of outhouse racing. But coming up next in sports, basketball highlights from around the Sun Belt Conference. Auto Alliance. USL was depending on Louisiana Tech tonight. Yeah, Sunbelt Conference were waiting to see the seedings and the championship and all. And we depended on Louisiana Tech. Not guy, good guys to depend on. Saturday's win over Louisiana Tech, the USL basketball team, kept its chances for the number one seed in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament alive, but nearly everyone was conceding the top spot would go to Western Kentucky because all they had to do was win one out of two to clinch it, and one of those two came against Louisiana Tech, and the Texas did not disappoint as they fall for the 18th time and 18th try in Sunbelt Conference basketball. 70 to 47 is the final score, so the number one seed goes to West Kentucky. They'll be at home in the number one seed, but the Cadence still have a shot at the co-championship for the conference, but for that to happen, it will require a hilltopper loss in their final game against Pan America. Now, around the conference tonight, UNO tried to soar up the third slot in the tournament. They took on South Alabama, but the big cat inside for USA, Calvin Cato, not one, but two blocks. Later on, though, UNO, the big cat is nowhere to be found as the privateers break the press. press. That's James Inman putting that one in there. And UNO rolls by 18, 76 to 58 is the final. Elsewhere, Jacksonville goes down to Jonesboro, Jonesboro and they go down. Arkansas State wins that game 86 to 71. So if you're wondering who USL will play in the tournament, we can tell you USL will meet the winner of the 7th seed and the 10th seed. We know La Tech is sacked up the 10th seed, but the 7th seed will be either Pan American or South Alabama. That depends on the outcome of Pan American and West Kentucky's game on Wednesday. Now over to high school basketball, Sweet 16 tournament. Tipped off today with action from the B and C classes. In Class C, it's Pine View over Grand Isle and Pelican knocking off Hyatt. In Class B, Gibbs, Gibbsland Coleman loses by one to Florian, 67-66. Pitkin and Doyle have just tipped off in late action. The pro hoops for the meeting of two of the top three teams in the Midwest Division, the Houston Rockets and the Utah Jazz. And check out newly acquired Jeff Hornacek down the lane getting the delivery from the mailman, but Robert Ory likes to run the fast break for Houston. Not much as, as, as enthusiastic as he was before that trade to Detroit, and Houston won't have too much enthusiasm tonight after this game. Utah wins at 89 to 85. That puts San Antonio all alone first place in the Midwest Division. In Baton Rouge, LSU Tigers play in the building named after Pistol Pete Maravich, and there is no doubt that Shaquille O'Neal is the school's most recognizable former player, but neither has graduated from LSU, and thus neither is in the school's Hall of Fame. But that is going to change. Today, the Louisiana State Athletic Council voted 9-1 to one to allow induction of non-graduates into the Hall. Both had pretty decent careers and probably should get enough folks to get elected. And finally, to the KATC Plays of the Week, where ABC News anchor Peter Jennings makes a special appearance. But please be advised, this is not a special report. It's just part of the sight and sounds from the past seven days. This is a special report from ABC News. I'm Peter Jennings at ABC News headquarters. A brief interruption to bring you up to date on the news that so many people in the country have been interested in. The women's figure skating is over. 
<laughs> well, here in uh, the Omni uh, in Atlanta, we... <laughs> From a guy not even in uniform, William Pittman, yes! About five inches wide, just a little wider than the... Trapped in at the rail, right at the rails is uh, fourth, now moving up as Holy Bull drops out of it. Halo's image, wide, wide, way on the outside, he bolts the turn and is being pulled up by Dave Penna as to here with a furlong to the finish, takes command. What happens when a trio of drivers mix it up? They're all spinning wildly down the back straightaway. We have one car going in, over, in, and that is Dave Stacy, and he is in the lake. All right, that was the car I bet on and the horse I bet on. No, Some <laughs> unusual video tonight. And the guy the, uh, actually made that and won a truck, that, that little no, hockey the, shot. Yeah. Won a Dodge. Won a truck. Pretty neat. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Matt. you, Mac. Yeah. Still to come tonight, Ron will have one final look at our forecast. Plus, what a sight, an outhouse careening down a hillside. That story's next. Could see a lot of rain tomorrow. Yes, a lot of rain and potentially some really nasty weather, too. The rain chances will be extremely high, as a matter of fact, 100%. 56 degrees the morning low. By noon, about 65. We should hit about 66 in between noon and 6 p.m., and then by 6 p.m., down to 63. All right, thank you, Ron. And finally tonight, it's not exactly an Olympic winter sport, but some people will do anything to get into the competitive spirit. Including putting an outhouse on skis. Over the weekend in Michigan, Main Street turned into a makeshift raceway for outhouse races. The object is to see whose outhouse makes it down the hill the fastest. We understand the event was anything but a wipeout. Not much to do up there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess not. <laughs> That'll do it for this edition of Action 3 News. Thanks for watching. Be sure to watch Good Morning Acadiana tomorrow at 6. Stay tuned. Nightline is coming up at 1135.